Okay, uh, this is the uh, 3D printing workshop uh, modeling tutorial. Uh, so the first thing to do is open up Rhino. Uh, once you have Rhino open, you want to go to Units and make sure you are working in inches. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is actually model uh, a bounding box. Um, so I'm just going to use the command box. I'll hit 0, comma, 0 for the first corner. And then we want to make this box 2 inches uh, cube. OK, so now I have my box. I switch into shaded. This is obviously a 3D solid. And what I really want is just the, um, just the edges of the box as curves. So I'm going to go ahead and use the command silhouette, turn those uh, edges into lines, group, and then I can delete the box. Now I can model inside this box without having to worry about whether I can see it. Uh, and I'll go ahead and change this layer, call this my bounding box. The next step will be to uh, just draw a couple of axes through the center uh, of this box. So I'm going to make another new layer, call this axes. Uh, I'll change the color, get red. OK. And then I'm going to draw a line. And I can just use the bottom of the box, go from midpoint to midpoint. Looks like I wasn't on my new layer. OK. So now I'll move this line. So I'll start uh, from the outside edge, move it up to the midpoint. So now we have one line going through the center of our box, uh, connecting two opposing faces. And I can just go ahead and rotate this line. And I'll uh, hit the option to copy it, go to the midpoint, and I'll just make the other line. And finally, to make the vertical axis, I can go rotate 3D. And again, I'll use this uh, second axis and just rotate it 90 degrees. Oops, you got to make sure you hit copy there as well. OK, so now we have our axes in our box. And so this is the kind of skeleton that we're going to use uh, to actually generate um, uh, our geometry. So the next step will be to go into your front viewport. So you should see a box that looks like this. And I'm going to start to draw. I'm going to start by drawing, and I'll make a new layer here. I'll we'll call this wires. I'm going to start by drawing a bunch of curves. Uh, on the faces of my box uh, to kind of define uh, where the, the uh, boundary of the geometry will be. So I'll change on to my new layer, use the command arc, or hit the button over there. And then we're going to use, in, in front view, we're going to use one of these uh, top corners as the center of our arc. And I'll just go over to the midpoint and then bring it down to the next midpoint. OK, so that's one arc that will define uh, uh, how our geometry meets the kind of uh, edge. Then I'll make another copy of this. So while I'm still in front view, I'll just go rotate. And again, I'll use my center axis, rotate it 180. So now we have two curves on one face of the box. I'm going to go back to top view. And uh, what we need to do also is to copy these two curves to the op opposite face of the box. So I'll select both, hit rotate. Use my center axis. OK, and then when you look at the box face on, 
what you should see is this kind of squished diamond form. So the two arcs that are on the back, if this is the front, two arcs that are on the back should be on the uh, opposite corners um, of the box. And now once you have uh, these lines defined, uh, the boundary lines, we're going to go ahead and draw a circle. So I'll go to circle. I'm going to choose the option to point. And I will snap to the midpoint of one of my arcs. And then to the midpoint of the opposing arc on the same face. Okay. And you should be left with uh, two arcs. And then a circle that like bisects them. Or I'm sorry, like uh, bridges between them, uh, between the midpoints. Uh, and so we're going to use these curves to begin to define the like interior edges of the geometry. So taking this curve, I'll use the command split. Click on those two outside curves. And then I'll just delete that outside one. You could trim it as well. So now we have this uh, half circle bridging between the two. I'm going to go ahead and move it. So hit move, snap to that midpoint, and then I'm going to bring it back until it's sitting right in the center of my box where all of my axes uh, intersect. And uh, then I want to go ahead and connect this arc, or semicircle, to my original arcs with a series of lines. So I'll type a line, go from the end point to the midpoint. Do the same thing on the bottom edge. OK. And so you can kind of see how our surface is going to flow towards the interior of the volume. And again, if we were to take these three uh, curves that we just drew, rotate them the same way, so using our center axis, uh, you can begin to see how this kind of saddle form is going to be generated in the center of our surface. Uh, now, the next move uh, is actually to begin to uh, draw the actual surfaces that are coming inwards. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a new layer again. I'll call this one surface. Give it another color. Okay, and I'm actually going to uh, choose these two outer arcs and use extrude curve. Make sure I have my new layer set to current. And I'm going to extrude those back to the end of those lines, or to the end of that uh, semicircle that's in the center. So right there. Um, and that's how the uh, beginning of the surface flows towards the inside. Again, I can copy both of these, or rotate them around the center axis. OK. And uh, finally, what we need to do is actually model this internal uh, saddle surface. Um, and uh, part of the reason we drew uh, these interior axes, again, is to give ourselves a framework to, to draw all the edges we need. So the way we're going to go about this is, uh, in order to draw that saddle, we need to break the saddle surface down into smaller uh, segments of surface that have four edges. So generally, when you're modeling in Rhino, you need to uh, uh, break down your surfaces into um, geometries that have either uh, three or four edges. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. So I'll use the line command. I'll go back to wires. Go from the inside edge of my extruded arc to the outside point of one of my central axes. Um, and so I think now you can kind of see this is where we're going to draw that surface uh, segment between those four edges. Um, so we also need, uh, what we need is for, uh, we need to have all four of those edges as single segments. So like this is a long segment. I'm going to go ahead and draw another line and just trace half of that axis. So from the outer point to the center of the box. I'm going to take this semicircle and split it. 
And I can use any one of these curves that intersects in the center. And now I have those three edges. So all I need is this edge. I can go ahead and dupe, duplicate, edge. And I'll just duplicate the inside edge of that uh, extrusion. Once I have that curve, I'll, uh, again, I'll go split um, <clears throat> and use this uh, semicircle, split it. Okay, and now we have those four curves that are going to define that uh, segmented saddle. Um, so first, uh, we're going to use the command sweep. Actually, sweep two uh, to model the surface. Uh, because not only do we need to, um, you know, uh, create a surface that, that fills the, uh, uh, goes between these four edges, we also want to make sure that it's tangent to uh, all the surfaces that it's going to meet uh, once we've modeled it. And I'll show you what I mean once, once we get a little further. So it's going to ask me, select first rail. I'm going to use the short edges. So that you need the, like, two parallel or two opposing edges of your four sides of your surface. Second rail will be this one. Then it'll ask me for cross-section curves, so I'm going to choose uh, again that split arc and then that single segment along the center axis and press enter. Um, and so uh, we can go ahead and leave all this stuff as default. Uh, we want to actually use the um, geometry of those curves. Again, those will help us define a surface that meets with the tangents or the uh, direction of all the surfaces it's joining to. Um, and now we can use this surface, and we're actually going to uh, rotate it and mirror it all the way around uh, on the interior to make uh, the rest of our saddle form. So the first step will be to rotate... Three D. I can rotate along that interior axis. One eighty. Okay. Uh, and then we can also go ahead and mirror. So with both of those. Um, Excuse me, I can't spell. With both of those uh, surfaces selected, we'll use the command mirror, make sure that we have the option to copy it turned on, and then I'm going to choose the option three point. And I will use that uh, interior arc right here, this edge. So uh, because this is an arc, it's planar, which means we can use three points along that uh, uh, arc to define a, a reflection plane or a mirror plane. Um, and then we can select all four of those surfaces. Again, I'll go rotate 3D. Again, I can use my central axis. And there we go. So now we've rotated uh, that one segment uh, all the way around so that we have a continuous... Uh, you can see the, the surface flows from one edge, uh, one set of outside edges into the other. And in the center we have that kind of saddle. So it's moving one way along one direction and the other way along the other. And if I change it into rendered view right now, so that, and I'll turn off my surface edges, the curves, I guess. And so that's kind of what we're looking for. That's what I mean when I say um, uh, not, uh, uh, we model the surface in a way where it meets at the tangent. So once you've turned off those edges, and we're seeing this thing kind of shaded in the viewport, uh, you can't really tell where the edge of one surface is in the, in the the end of one and the beginning of the next is. Okay, so go back to shaded. 
So that's our geometry. I'm going to go ahead and select all my surfaces. I can just right click select all or select objects on my uh, surface layer, join them into one poly surface. And before I move on, so the next step uh, we're going to take will be to prepare this uh, geometry for 3D printing. What I want to do first is check if I have uh, what are called naked edges. I'm going to use the command show edges. And this little dialog will open. I'm going to switch into wireframe so we can see through. And I want to make sure I have naked edges selected. And what the viewport is showing me is basically all the edges uh, that aren't joined to another surface, all the open edges of my geometry. And the reason we want to look at that is because if we if we modeled this, um, you know, if we didn't model the interior surfaces correctly, we might find that they haven't joined properly, that they haven't formed a continuous poly surface. We just want to make sure we have a totally clean surface. Uh, if you do find that you have any of these naked edges on those interior edges of those surfaces, uh, you'll want to go back and repeat uh, repeat the modeling of that and the um, rotating and mirroring until you get a nice clean uh, uh, set of surfaces. Okay, and so now uh, we have a single poly surface that has uh, no thickness in Rhino, meaning it hasn't been, uh, you know, extruded or offset. Um, it hasn't been given uh, dimension yet, basically. So Anytime we're taking a geometry to a 3D printer, we have to give it a thickness um, in order for the uh, printer to be able to kind of produce that, you know, material. What I want to do first is actually reorient uh, my geometry um, in the orientation that I'm going to print it, just so we can kind of visualize better how it's going to work. So I will just select my uh, bounding box and my um, a poly surface, and I'm going to make a copy. Move that to the side. Okay, and then I'm going to select my poly surface. Or I'm sorry, I can select both. Rotate 3D. This time I don't want to make a copy. Okay. So that's the orientation that we're going to print this thing in. And once again, like one one thing to look out for, um, and you'll see this as well when we when we load the geometry into the print software. But one thing to look out for is anywhere where you might have um, an overhang, uh, like anywhere where there's a horizontal surface that doesn't have something underneath it that's going to hold it up when it's printing in the air. So the only place we really have this on this geometry is right here in the middle, right? And what's great about this shape is that as we print and go up. The printer is going to, you know, kind of print out until it meets somewhere in the middle. So it'll do a pretty good job of kind of bridging that gap as it prints. So this shape doesn't really need any uh, support. Um, and, you know, in the print dialog, again, I'll show you how to generate support and look at where the surfaces are that might need support. Um, but oftentimes it'll be more beneficial just... Uh, you know, just to point this out, it could be more beneficial, uh, let's say, to model my own support uh, in Rhino, just for the specific area that I need to to hold up, like an overhang or a um, or a or a loose uh, geometry, without having to apply support to the entire model. Uh, now, so like I said, what we need to do is actually give this geometry a thickness in order to uh, send it to the 3D printer. Because uh, it can't print, you know, like a single line. So what I like to do first, uh, because of uh, because we need to actually mesh this geometry anyway. So, you know, in order to send a, a geometry to the 3D printer, we're going to export as a certain file type. And it needs to be a mesh rather than a NURBS surface, which is what, you know, which is what we have now. So I'm going to select this and just type the command mesh. And with mesh, you just get one option. I mean, you can. there's more options in here if you want to try and play with those. But basically, we can move the slider around. 
If I, if I move it way down to the bottom, you'll see that the mesh that was generated has relatively few, uh, you know, faces. And again, if we go into rendered view, you'll see why that's not a good thing, right? So without a lot of faces, we're, we're getting kind of a low resolution version of our surface. So what I actually want to do is when I mesh this guy, I'm going to crank that bar all the way to the right. And you can see in this case, we got a much finer uh, mesh resolution. And now if I were to go into rendered, you'll see we have a much smoother looking. Basically, you can't tell the difference between this and this. Um, now, like I said, we still need to give this a thickness. Because we've already meshed it, I'm going to go offset mesh. This is a different from offset surface, different command. So I'll go offset mesh. Now, right now, uh, <laughs> we're getting a really messy result because our offset distance is too large. Um, so just like with the NURBS, you would get kind of weird intersections if you offset it. Uh, you know, start to intersect itself. What I'm going to give this surface is a sixteenth of an inch. So under offset distance, I'm going to type 0 0.0625. And now it's giving us a live preview in the viewport of what that'll look like when I've offset it. Again, uh, one of the reasons this geometry works so well is because at that bottom edge, because this face uh, is basically perfectly perpendicular to the ground, it's going to offset uh, straight outwards, which means that uh, we'll have a flat bottom. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in a second. So the other option I want to select here is solid. So that's going to bridge, um, uh, you know, between offsets. And I'm also going to select both sides. Um, so that way it's offsetting in both directions. Uh, just to point out here, uh, I'm actually going to end up with a surface that's an eighth of an inch thick because I've selected a sixteenth in both directions. Um, and a, a minimum thickness for the 3D printer uh, to print something without you know, failing or um, having issues is about a sixteenth. So in this case, we're doing double that. Okay. And then once I'm done with those settings, I'll click Offset. And now, so we have a thickened uh, shell. We have a thickened, you know, uh, geometry. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, if we didn't have a flat bottom, what we would probably want to do is actually trim the bottom of our geometry with a plane so that it does have a flat bottom, because that uh, bit of of our geometry that's that's sitting on the ground is where the print is going to start, right? So we need a really good uh, amount of surface area there for the print to really bond uh, to the printer bed. Uh, so anyway, um, that's another thing to watch out for is, is making sure you have a really flat uh, bottom edge to your geometry. Um, and uh, I just want to point out, so I made this a mesh before I offset it. Of course, you could do, you could do this uh, differently, you could offset uh, the poly surface. Uh, one issue here is that it uh, won't let you offset uh, a poly surface in both directions. So what we'd have to do here is actually turn off the option for solid. I could set the distance to 0.0625, a sixteenth. I could offset it one way and then Offset it again, this time flip all. Offset it the other way. And then I would actually have to go in here um, and bridge the uh, edges myself. I could go loft and start to uh, loft between the outside edges of this form. Oops. So yeah, when you select edges to loft, you have to make sure you choose on the same side so it doesn't twist your surface. Okay, and just to demonstrate 
So if I joined these two, again, I would have to go all the way around and, and uh, finish, uh, uh, you know, making lofts and join the whole thing into a closed solid. But just for right now, I'm going to show you if I select this object and go to show edges, you can see uh, we got a lot of problems. So again, I'm on naked edges. And because of the kind of complexity of this geometry, it just didn't give us a clean offset. Um, so like you can see that on the interior here, we've generated all these new uh, edges or these new surfaces where the edges don't meet anymore. So what, we'd, what we would end up with, even if we went all the way around and lofted the outside edge, we would still end up with like a not a closed shell. And with, a, with like a shell, or a, or a thickened surface, the printer really needs uh, us to have a closed um, geometry. <clears throat> and the reason for that is it needs to know, so it's going to basically it goes in and it prints the outside walls. So it'll print a couple layers along the outside and then on the inside, and you'll see this when you go to print, it'll like generate a little honeycomb and like kind of fill the inside volume with that uh, structure. And unless we have a closed surface, the software doesn't know how to fill uh, the volume, right? It doesn't know what inside and outside is. Um, so this is just to demonstrate that when you're, when you're uh, making models for 3D printing, it's a lot easier to mesh it and then do a mesh offset in Rhino for whatever reason than to make an a offset poly surface and then mesh it. The offset poly surface is just uh, kind of messy. Um, okay, and then the last thing, let me just go back here. Uh, the last thing I want to show you guys um, is a command called mesh repair. And this is a pretty good tool, again, uh, just in Rhino, for kind of checking whether your mesh is going to work. So if I go check mesh with that thing selected, it's going to tell me, first of all, this is a good mesh or this is a bad mesh. Now, there's a lot of different problems that meshes can have. Uh, one of them would be if you have naked edges, like a knot, uh, when you have an open shell. Uh, one of them is called, uh, what's called a, a non-manifold edge, which means you have two faces that are actually overlapping. Um, and if we had taken that thickened uh, poly surface and meshed it, you would see that we actually have all those things happening. Um, so let me just show you that real quick. So if I go ahead and mesh this geometry, actually I'll go the other way. If I mesh this geometry, click OK. I'll select this one and then go, uh, so I'll finish this, go check mesh. It tells me right away this is a bad mesh. And the reason it's a bad mesh is, is because when we offset that poly surface, we got these kind of messy edges. We look through the, um, like we have four non-manifold edges. If we go next, uh, yeah, so the main problem is these non-manifold edges, those, those messy edges we saw when we offset this. Uh, so just, just uh, you know, to reinforce that offsetting once you have a mesh is better. Um, and also, you know, if you do have problems with your mesh, uh, sometimes you can go in here and click repair. Like I can check, you know, repair my non-manifold edges. And sometimes it will be able to, you know, kind of uh, fix problems with your mesh. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, just so you're aware that there's a mesh repair tool, you should always check your mesh with this tool, mesh repair. Uh, before you're exporting it and sending it to the 3D printer. And now once we're done with this thing, again, we want to make sure it has the right orientation uh, for printing. <clears throat> and because of the print software we're using now, I'm actually going to go ahead and change my units. So I'll type units. And I'm going to change from inches to millimeters. Again, it's going to ask me to scale. I'll hit yes which means that even though we're in millimeters, my geometry is still the same size. So if I were to measure it distance in inches, 
you would see my box is still two inches. So it's the same size. And uh, now, once I'm in millimeters, I can go ahead and, and export uh, this geometry. So I'll select, uh, you know, my mesh shell, file, export, selected. Um, and then I want to save it as an STL file. If I scroll way down in the S's, you'll see STL or stereo lithography. Again, this will always need to be uh, a mesh, so it's easier just to mesh it beforehand. And then I can name it whatever. I guess when you're when you're exporting, you probably want to put your name in it. Um, and then you will see um, uh, that new file show up in the directory, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring it in to show you. So if I drag that file into my Rhino, click import. I have to tell it, oh yeah, it's in millimeters. Okay, and there's my geometry. So it's exactly the same. Um, okay, so that's the end of this video. Uh, there will be another video to show you how to upload this uh, model to the 3D print software, uh, as well as how to um, uh, model with this thing for your drawings. Um, all right.